Good morning, everyone. Welcome to this morning study. And uh, before we begin, can you join me in a word of prayer? <clears throat> Dear Father in heaven, thank you for the time we have this morning to open your word together, to continue to look at the book of Judges as it relates to our time. May your Holy Spirit bring a conviction upon our hearts and that you can help us to understand these things that we are studying. Be with each person, with their particular needs, their families, the friends, the influence that we have. Help us to represent you in all that we do. Be with us now through thy spirit, we pray and ask in Jesus' name. Amen. <clears throat> okay, so as I said yesterday, I wasn't really happy with Sunday's presentation because it was very difficult uh, to deal with to finish off Jephthah. And then yesterday, we were looking at Ibs and Elam and Abdon. And this is very interesting. So, um, so Aran pointed out to me this morning that we, we hadn't really completed Elon. So what we have done with this line, so this line goes from December 6, 2020 uh, to December 25th, 2022. Um, there is uh, a period of one biblical year from the, from the arrival of the first angel to the arrival of the second. That's a period of um, from the 20th day of the ninth month to the 20th day of the ninth month. So that's a biblical year. And then from the second angel to the third angel is a Gregorian year, December 25th to December 25th, 2021 to 2022. Um, we had established that this, this first message arrives December 6th. The darkness is uh, the darkness relating to um, uh, the strange wives. And, and we get that from the symbol, the 20th day of the ninth month. Um, and then we have a formalization of that message 80 days later with the publication in academia of this paper that explains uh December 6th, and then 220 days later, we have a confrontation at uh, with the American group, with Mark Johnson and Daniel Fontenot over uh, uh, some of the conspiracy theories regarding transhumanism and, and how it relates to Ellen White's statements regarding amalgamation, right? So I'm banned from having anything to do with the American group. Uh, 84 days later, um, on December 25th, we have another confrontation. Uh, this is uh, not so much with Colin, um, though he's partly responsible because he, he made a mistake in, of assumption that I wasn't there the whole study. When I was asking a question, he thought I was being belligerent which I wasn't. I was actually trying to get an answer to a question I didn't know the answer to. Um, but anyway, that's going to be the arrival of the second message. And 49 days later, Adilio does his presentation with the 1629. And then on November 24th, we use that 1629 to establish this Thanksgiving symbol. We find the symbol 2688, which is the number of days to April 5th, 2030. And um, we have this symbol here of the 168, which is the number of hours in a week, times 16 to get the 2688 days. Um, so those, that's the main line there. So we have these different dates, these different way marks. And then what we did yesterday is we looked at the names of these three, Ibzan, Elon, and Abdon. We looked, one, we looked at, uh, First, we tried to examine the Hebrew names or the Hebrew numbers for their names. But we looked at the gematria, and what we noticed is that the product of their names um, could be represented as the number of hours. So um, with Ibzan, uh, the product of his name produces 6552. And... If you take 6552 hours, that's 273 days. So that was very interesting. 
Um, it's the number is also 126 by 52, and uh, the sum of his name is 52. So that again was interesting. Then we had uh, Elon. Now we hadn't we had done the sum, which is 46, but we hadn't, and we had looked at the product, which was 12,600. But if we took it as the number of hours, that's 525 days. So we have again this other important symbol, the 525, and his waymark is at the end of the 525, December 25th, 2021. And then Abdon. Um, the sum of his gematria is 36, and uh, the product is 1680, which is the number of hours in 70 days. Now, he has 70 sons and 30 nephews that ride 70 ascalons. So this obviously becomes an important symbol. Um, now, he's going to be buried in Pirithon. Now, the Hebrew... Uh, number for the word Pirithon is H6552, which is interesting because that's also the product of um, Ibzan, right? So that would give you that uh, uh, 273 days as well. So um, some interesting uh, numbers that are produced by these names. Now, of course, we don't have a great number of verses um, with this, uh, with these three judges. We also noted, of course, that there is um, that each of their reigns, seven, ten, and eight, would be seven years, ten, and eighteen years altogether, which, of course, would be twenty-five years, um, which we didn't put here on the chart, but it's pretty simple math to do. But we also know that 10 and 8 is a way to say 18. So we have a symbol for July 18. Also from December 6th, 2020 to November 24th, two is 718 days, a symbol of July 18th. And we noticed if we multiplied 52 by 36, that is we're taking the sum of the first and the last, and multiplying them together, we get 1872. So, so there's lots of symbols here in this line, this waymark. This waymark is the empowerment of the second angel in the line of the judges above, as you can see. Um, and uh, so that's kind of just a summary of what the, this line is. And any questions about, about this line? Okay, so Angela asked the question. So if we take this uh, 6552, and um, what she's asking here is uh, Pirithon, which means chieftaincy, and Ibsen's um, 6552, could this be 6 times 5 times 5 times 2, which would be, um, okay, 5 times 5 is 25 times 6. Is, okay, 150 times 2 is 300. Yeah. Um, so it's possible that the number 300 is here in this line uh, with that pirithon. Um, now, I'd spent, of course, we had spent some time, especially dealing you know, with um, uh, Jephthah, dealing with. Uh, Capricars um, constant, and you know that that number six five five two ends up being one of the main, uh, though in a different order, but becomes one of the main numbers that you run into when you're. Um, and I'm not going to go into that; it's too complicated. But uh, those that number and, and iterations of one eight seven two are common in these. Um, calculations. Um, I don't know if I should show people that chart. It's just going to confuse them. But um, one of the things we've learned over the last little bit is that 
these the numbers of the names which we've known before um that is the hebrew numbers can have significance they can be spans of time and um They can also, uh, we can take the names, the meanings of the names, of course, as symbols. We can take the gematria of a name. We can take the product of the name. Uh, we can turn that into hours. We can turn it into minutes. We can turn it into days, right? So we have all of these different symbols. And the thing is, we've constructed these lines uh, before we have recognized a lot of the symbols. And these symbols help confirm these lines. So I don't know if there's anything else that we can see or that we need to look at when it comes to. Um, there's probably more that we could glean. I don't. I don't know. I've I've looked over it and I've seen some things that might be significant. Uh, one of the things that I had done and that we had done before in uh, Jephthah's, we had added that. Um, uh, Shibboleth and Jephthah's number together. And we got that period that's 30 years exactly. And there might be something else that we can do with, with these. If we, um, so one, one point is if you take 78 plus 356, we're going to get 434. So that's kind of interesting. Uh, now, 434 isn't particularly represented in this line, but we know that it's it's a division of the 777, just like 525 is. Um, and then I had added um, the number of Abdon to that, and you get a number that's 6,092. Um, and I said, well, if that's a span of time, it's going to be, you know, 16 years. Um, and uh, 16 years and uh, how many days? 248 days. And I don't know if that's significant, if I could put it in a line anywhere or see what it means. But we could take each of the, the Hebrew numbers for their names and we could get this a period of time that would be six uh, 6,092 days. So I, I don't know if, if that's significant, if there's something that we could do there with that. We tried looking at the 78 days and connecting it to the 80 days. We couldn't, I couldn't really do that. 156 is, um, you know, nine days less than a year. And the 5658 by itself is in like 14 years or something and something, some days. You know, if I add uh, Pirith on to that total, if you look at all those Hebrew numbers in that left column, uh, you get 12,644 days. So um, we know that 12,640 or 12,600 is 525 days. So this would be like, you know, 2,500. Uh, 26 days if we convert it into hours and 20 hours so but anyway are, are we satisfied that we have enough for this line that we don't need to start delving into it any more than this or because right now I mean we could try to take time and look at these different numbers I've looked at some of them but I don't have things that are other than the 78 plus 350 434, which I thought was really interesting. Um, I could put that in there, I guess, just so we remember it. So 
Let's put that down at the bottom. Anything else? Right now I'm still playing catch up and there's some other things I'm, I'm taking a look at. I mean, we have that 300 days in there. So we have that 300, which we could get from the Pirathon. I don't know. I'm pretty satisfied with this line, to be honest, that, that this is a, sol a solid line. Um, now, this line is uh, 749 days in length. You know, it's 28 days short of um, a 777. I think if you went from December 6, you'd get to January um 22nd or something uh 2022 if you wanted 777 days so we don't have a 777 day line here we have a 749 day line which is 107 times seven so the 10th day of the seventh month times seven okay Now, um, so right now we got is Zebulun, uh, the Zebulonite. So Elon is a Zebulonite, um, and and that's in Judges twelve twelve. We had noted Judges ten ten and eleven eleven. Uh, would there be any significance in twelve twelve? Okay. Um, before we answer that question, I do need well, to clear. We, multiply, yeah. What's that? Multiply twelve. Uh, go ahead. Twelve by twelve is one hundred and forty-four. So that, that's a symbol for the one hundred and forty-four thousand. So one thing I wanted to clear up just was somebody had um, made a comment on the video from a couple of days ago, where I was asking about um, uh, the what happened on Sabbath. Because I was trying to figure out who this um, this woman is, um, Tanya Jackson, and I wasn't sure if this was this Adventist elder woman, but I guess it isn't. It's just the person that travels with Maimon. I know you said you know I shouldn't uh, criticize or you know Maimon without talking to him first, but I didn't feel that I was actually criticizing him. Like as a person, I don't know anything about him as a person. I didn't make any comments about him as a person. Um, but the one thing I do want to point out here is that um, uh, we are taking a position, at least I'm taking a position, that there is a lack of interest in this in this movement. Um, 
uh, in the message of this movement to many who are in the movement. And uh, when we looked at the line of Jephthah and just commenting on it, uh, one of the things that I noted is that when we get to the line of Jephthah, we get to the end, Judges 12, verse 7. So that's a symbol for midnight. It's also 12 times 7 is 84. But we get to June 22nd, uh, 2023. And that's 6 times 220 um, is this uh, period of time that divides up this six years that is given to this movement from November 9th, 2019 to June 22nd, 2023. And, and there we have a number of restoration times six, the number of a man. And I don't know what that means. All I do know is that um, it appears that a third angel has arrived, that a type of close of probation has occurred. Um. And that's that's one thing I noted. Now, in all of this, I'm not trying to criticize any people. I don't know anything about people as individuals, what their decisions are, what their motivations are. All I know is that the movement at the present time, in a general sense, doesn't have interest in these things that we're doing that we believe to be light. And, and that concerns me. So... You know, if what we're doing is truth and people are unwilling to examine it, that to me would be a dangerous thing. And I don't know what I can do as an individual to try to persuade people to look at these things. I've tried. Um, obviously, I'm not as effective as I would like to be. I do know that, um, you know, when Stephen gets here, you know, I plan to go to see go to call and study um, <clears throat> on Saturday night on the 15th and the 22nd. I plan to go both times. Um, and, you know, hopefully, you know, Stephen, he's a little meeker and milder than me. So maybe he can uh, get people to look at some things himself. Um, you know, somehow people see me is in opposition to something I'm just interested in knowing what the truth is and examining things. But, you know, obviously the way that we communicate sometimes isn't always effective. So even in questioning, you know, about what happened on Sabbath, that can come across as I'm judging, you know, other people based on what they're doing. My point is it's just a lack of interest uh, in um, this message that seems to be characterized by uh, the American and Canadian groups. But I'm not condemning anybody in there. Um, I don't know about people as individuals. I'm just saying in general, there isn't an interest in these things. And so anyway, I needed to add that there. But we can see that we have this 12-12. 12, 12. 12 times 12 is 144. Uh, Elon is the way mark that is the center uh, of that. That is, it's December 25th, 2021. And it should be a message to us of the importance of this movement. <clears throat> okay, so... Um, we want to move on to Samson. So just before we turn to those next verses, chapter 13, I'm just going to share this chart here. Um, so here we have, with the story of Samson, we had a number of ways that we looked at Samson. So you're going to see, I'm just showing you these charts, which we're going to go through. And this is basically what we have to do, what we have left to do before the camp meeting is to get through uh, Samson and Delilah. And there was lots of interesting things that I don't remember about these lines. So not all of these are dealing with Samson. Um, the one line that I found interesting was this Samson and Samson and Delilah uh, story. So 
is sort of crossed over uh, between these two histories. And these um, are rather uh, difficult, I guess, uh, to sort of put this the whole Samson story together. So we're going to have to go through it. It's going to take us a bit of time. And let's look at the scriptures themselves. Now, these in some ways we've actually have a more complete as because as we move through our review of <clears throat> of our lines, um, once we got to Samson, we spent a lot more time and worked on a lot more detail. <clears throat> and of course, there's lots here that we still have to address regarding the chronology that hopefully Stephen and I during the camp meeting can get sorted out and before the camp meeting. <clears throat> uh, so Judges 13, we're going to say that this is describing a period of darkness. Right. The children of Israel did evil again in the sight of the Lord. And the Lord delivered them into the hand of the Philistines 40 years. Now, um, so this is a period of time, 40 years, that they're in the hands of the Philistines. But this, this is a rather difficult chronology, figuring out where Samson comes into play, because obviously he's not born at the end of the 40 years. He's going to be continuing during this period of time. But anyway, it says there was a certain man of Zorah of the family of the Danites, whose name was Manoah, and his wife was barren and bare not. So um, a woman represents a church. This is a church that is barren. We have Manoah. Um, so now we have lots of things to look at. His name means rest. It's related to the name of Noah. And um, um, he's from Zora. So Zora is 6881. It's a place in Palestine called Zaria, Zora, and Zaria. Zora is the Hebrew. Um, and The angel of the Lord appeared unto the woman and said unto her. So first, this angel of the Lord, which is Christ, is going to appear to the woman. And says, said unto her, behold, now thou art barren and bearest not, but thou shalt conceive and bear a son. So we, we noticed the parallel here to the story of Mary, right, to the birth of Christ. Now, therefore, beware, I pray thee, and drink not wine nor strong drink, and eat not any unclean thing. For lo, thou shalt conceive and bear a son, and no razor shall come upon his head. For the child shall be a Nazarite unto God from the womb, and he shall begin to deliver Israel out of the hand of the Philistines. So here we're going to have the birth of Samson, Shimshon, which means sun sign, sunshine. Now Samson is presenting to us a story because he represents Christ, but ironically. That is, the moral aspects of this story are ironic. And, and that becomes a problem in our thinking, because it doesn't mean we just look at things opposite. Just the moral aspects are opposite, not the whole story. Um, so Samson is the type of Christ, and this is recognized by many people throughout Christendom, throughout the ages. Uh, the parallels between Samson and Christ, but he's more in morally a contrast to Christ. Um, and then the woman came and told her husband, saying, "A man of God came unto me, and his countenance um, was like the countenance of an angel of God, very ter terrible." But I asked him not whence. Uh, he was, neither told me he, me his name. But he said unto me, Behold, thou shalt conceive and bear a son, and now drink no wine nor strong drink, neither eat any unclean thing, for the child shall be a Nazarite to God 
um, from the womb, and he shall begin to deliver Israel out of the hand of the Philistines. Uh, wait, what, did I jump something here? Uh, yeah, I jumped here. Pardon me. Um, yeah. And, but he said unto me, Behold, thou shalt conceive and bear a son. Now drink no wine or strong drink, neither eat any unclean thing. But the child shall be a Nazarite to God from the womb to the day of his death. Then Manoah entreated the Lord and said, O my Lord, let the man of God which thou didst send come again unto us and teach us what we shall do unto the child that shall be born. So Manoah's wife has Christ come to her. The angel of the Lord tells her that she's going to have a son and that he's going to be a Nazarite from his birth. She's going to tell her husband, right? Um, and then he's uh, going to call upon the Lord because he wants to know what to do. And it says in verse 9, God hearkened to the voice of Manoah, and the angel of God came again unto the woman as she sat in the field. But Manoah, her husband, was not with her. And the woman made haste and ran and showed her husband and said unto him, Behold, the man hath appeared unto me that came unto me the other day. And Manoah arose and went after his wife and came to the man and said unto him, Art thou the man that spakest unto the woman? And he said, I am. And Manoah said, now let thy words come to pass. How shall we order the child and how shall we bring him? And the angel of the Lord said unto Manoah, of all that I said unto the woman, let her beware. She may not eat of anything that cometh of the vine, neither let her drink wine or strong drink or eat any unclean thing. All that I have commanded her. And Manoah said unto the angel of the Lord, I pray thee, let us detain thee until we have made ready a kid for thee. And the angel of the Lord said unto Manoah, Though thou detain me, I will not eat of thy bread. And if thou wilt offer a burnt offering, thou must offer it unto the Lord. For, no, for Manoah knew not that he was an angel of the Lord. And Manoah said unto the angel of the Lord, What is thy name, that when thy, when thy sayings come to pass, we may do thee honor? The angel of the Lord said unto him, Why ask, askest thou thus after my name, seeing it is secret? Right? So we looked into this. This is um, uh, a word that's related to the word palmoni, uh, pili or pali. It means secret or wonderful. Um, and... Uh, so then it says, Manoah took a kid with a meat offering, offered it upon a rock, and the Lord and the angel did wondrously. That is, halal, which has to do with, is related to the word secretly. And Manoah and his wife looked on. For it came to pass when the flame went up toward heaven from the altar, that the angel of the Lord ascended in the flame of the altar, and Manoah and his wife looked on it and fell on their faces to the ground. But the angel of the Lord did no more appear to Manoah and his wife. Then Manoah knew that he was an angel of the Lord. And Manoah said unto his wife, we shall surely die because we have seen God. Yeah, so um, Angela's comparing this to Habakkuk 2.2, 2, right? Um Write the vision, make it plain upon tables that he may run that readeth it. Okay. Now we had noticed um, in these stories. Uh, so let me just. So what we had done is we had done this line of Samson. Um, I'm just going to finish this reading here. Uh, So in verse 22, Manoah said unto his wife, we shall surely die because we have seen God. But his wife said unto him, if the Lord were pleased to kill us, he would not have received the burnt offering and the meat offering at our hands. Neither would he have showed us all these things, nor would, as at this time, have told us such things as these. So when we had drawn out the line, the main line of Samson, sorry there. There we go. 
Um, so that's the line at the bottom. We have the darkness, 13, 1 to 23. That's what we had. And and then we're going to have 9, 11. And an increase of knowledge uh, being uh, uh, 13, verse 25. 13, verse 24, we're going to have as the time of the end. So 13, verse 24 was, the woman bare a son and called his name Samson. The child grew and the Lord blessed him. So we're going to have that name Samson as um, the birth of Samson as and him being named as marking that arrival of the first message. So that's going to be 9-11. The spirit of the Lord began to move at him, uh, move him at times in the camp of Dan between Zara and Eshtal. And that's going to be the increase of knowledge, the spirit of God uh, moving him, right? And then uh, that's going to bring us to 11.9. So 11.9 um, to 9.11. You can see there I have 107 times 62. That's Now that is an a, uh, inclusive count that includes 9.11 and 11.9. So it's 6,634 inclusive days. Uh, we did an exclusive count uh, when it was 6,632 and just a cardinal count of 6,633. Um, so we had used that when we did Jephthah. We had looked at the 3316. Um, <clears throat> so, so I could count it that way, 107 times 62, but that would be inclusive. And... Uh, then we have uh, – um, so we're going to go there to Judges chapter 14, verse 5. Now, when Samson – then went Samson down, his father and his mother, to Timnath, and came to the vineyards of Timnath, and behold, a young lion roared against him. Now, whether that was the best way to look at that or not, because we don't have verses 1 to 5, we just have 14 verse 5. But I think we obviously could take this whole story. So he's going to see this woman of Timnath, right? And he's there's going to be this whole uh, marriage thing that goes on that doesn't turn out the way Samson wants it to. So, okay, comment? One. Okay. Uh, what do you have? A okay. So. So anyway, that's what we did. Whether this is correct or not, so we don't know. Right. We, we, this is just how we draw out these lines. Um, now we're taking this uh, this lion, young lion roaring as the formalization of the message. So when we draw the line, we need to have a period of darkness. We find what it is, and then we need to figure out what messages arrived. Um, to say that Samson was born, um, what is the message with Samson being born? Um, if we're going to take that this line roaring is a formalization, uh, then we need to recognize what this, this line of 9-11 is. So one of the things about the line of Samson is it's, it's one of the more complex lines. It has, there's many different lines in the story of Samson. Um, because the story of Samson is going to go from chapter 13 all the way to uh, chapter 16. So it's got four chapters. Some of these judges have less than four verses. So Samson has a lot of information. And, and I think it's extremely important line in that it covers this whole history 
of the judges. In a sense, it, it's it's a repeat of the whole history. Now, if we remember how these lines work, um, we know that uh, if I just go above here, you can see in the judges line, Samson is going to be the arrival of the third message, which we mark as January 11th, 2023. It's going to be the end of Collins' chronological prediction, even though he doesn't make that prediction of that date. Um, so it, it brings us right into our history. But in doing so, the story of Samson is going to um, repeat the entire history of this movement. Now, we have this period of darkness that is going to precede 9-11, right? So normally we know when we have our whole reform line of this movement of FFA and all that, we're going to go back to 1989. Here, we're going to start at 9-11. So we're saying that there is a darkness that precedes 9-11. Doesn't mean it's just a time of total darkness, because obviously it's a period where the first angel arrived in the bigger line, but this is a zoom into our line at a particular point. And that point is January 11th, 2023. So Samson's zooming into that history. Now, when we were doing this, we actually hadn't come to January 11th, uh, 2023. At the time we were doing Samson, drawing out these lines, right? We, we were just entering into that history. <clears throat> but now we have this waymark, January 11th, 2023. We're looking at it. We're saying this is a period of darkness. And, and in this period of darkness, there's a lot that's happening. I mean, an angel of the Lord comes to uh, Samson's parents, to his mother, and then to his father as well. And then Samson's going to be born at 9-11. That's what we're saying. So what does Samson represent? <clears throat> In the context of this line, he's a type of Christ. If he's a type of Christ, is he also not a type of the 144,000? Okay, so he's a type of the 144,000. Yeah, so he's a type of of us, and 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 because he's he's representing the morality of Christ in an ironic sense. I mean, in some ways, he represents us in character. That is, he's representing the flaws in this movement. But in the end, we'll be victorious. You know, we had Parminder and Tess who were saying, and Tabo and others, that this movement does not, not sin, um, which was really, I think, blasphemy. But um, and especially in the context of how they tried to apply it. I think it's beyond blasphemy. Because no, in, in this in this kind of a situation, it's lifting up self very directly. Yeah, it's putting man in the place of God. Exactly. Um now if we took the name of Samson, if we took uh um, the Hebrew number, it's, it's 8, 1, 2, 3. And if you use that as days, it would be 22 years, um, 87 days, and 12 hours. So you got 8, 7, 1, 2 at the end, uh, this iteration of July 18, 20. Um, but 22 years is a symbol of restoration.
and whether that's the best way to take that number of SAMHSA. Now we had done um, with the gematria of these other names. We had taken the products. So one of the things is uh, 8123 is prime 1022. And so that's the symbol of October 22nd. And since he's the third way mark, that makes sense. Um, his normal sum of his gematria is 81. Now his normal product is 985,530. So it's a pretty large number. So I don't know what to do with that number. It's just a pretty large product. Um, so it doesn't work out simply as uh, the others do, which, which is surprising that they're actually such small products. But anyway, um, so we got uh, also, Angela points out, um, August 1st, 23, the day after camp meeting, possibly. So our camp meeting ends on, I don't know if that's the day after, because our camp meeting ends on the 30th, and there's 31 days in July, so it would be two days after camp meeting. Um, but we know we had a bunch of of symbols dealing with Samson, um, you know, his name being, meaning sunshine, uh, which is a type of light, right? Primary source of light, the sun. Um, I don't know if we need to go through this whole story again of chapter 13. We're probably going to have to go so that we can understand it. And let me see here if we have, have a chart of it. I'm trying to figure out what all this is. Mm. So we had looked at Judges 13, 13, and we'd marked that as July 18, 2020. So even though we have a period of darkness in the story of the Judges, uh, we also created this line. And so we have all of these different lines. I'm not sure how to do this because I'm not really satisfied with, um, with Samson, even though I know that we have... We've seen all these things in the story of Samson. I think we need a simpler line, some way in which to understand uh, the complexity of this. So this period of darkness. So we spent a lot of time studying it, but we don't really have uh, a way to, uh, to put this together. I guess is what I'm trying to say. Like we, we have here, um, November 9th. So we have this history. But we're saying that it's going to be uh, from, no, from September 11th to November 9th is going to be this first angel arriving. Um, but we have all of this that happens in chapter 13. Hmm. 
So what would we do with this story? The birth of Samson. We have this whole line. We have to have a line of the birth of Samson. We can't just say it's a period of darkness without drawing it out on a line. But I don't know how to do it. I don't have a really good answer. Now, uh, let me think here. So, so when we get to Samson, the death of Samson, so let's, let's go back there. So we know he's going to judge Israel for 20 years, right? But that that, um, that it's, it's not as, so it's not going to be from the time that he's born that he's going to be judge, right? And Stephen knows this chronology better than I do because he's spent more time with it. Um, People have any ideas how we should approach this. How should we approach drawing out this this line? So we're saying the chapter thirteen. Um is the birth of Samson. Should we just start drawing a line trying to figure it out? Because we, we don't have a line of, of Samson's birth that I could see. Guess I'm leading up. I'm going to have to figure this out, right? Um, okay. So what we're going to do is I'm just going to duplicate this slide, get rid of all this. I'm going to take Samson up here. I'm going to call this. Um, We call this Manoa. Okay, sorry, I'm sharing the Bible still, not this. Okay, so here we have the line. We're going to call it the line of Manoah. He's part of this story. So, so this is going to be a line that is the period of darkness that we're characterizing. So it, it, it precedes 9-11, but it doesn't mean that it just, um, you know, is from 1989 to 9-11 or anything like that, right? It's, it's, it's going to be, um, you know, because I'm not sure where it ends, but, but I don't think it's just going to end at 9-11. I mean, maybe it does. <clears throat> so what we have to do is we have to get rid of uh, all these different things. The way I'm going to do that is I'm just going to put question marks there so, so I don't have to draw these boxes again. Okay. So we know we're going to have a darkness. Yeah, I don't know if I need to do that. Just put all these into questions. And same with all this. I'll, I'll leave those other things at the bottom because I'll probably use them. 
for spans of time. So the first thing that we have to do is we have to look at Manoa's name. So when it comes to Manoa, Okay, so there's a comparison between the proclamation of Samson's birth and those of Isaac, John the Baptist, and Christ. All involved angelic visitations to their parents. That's true, right? So we, so we have these parallels. Though I would think that uh, the biggest comparison would be that of Christ in, in the language. Some people just say that the story of Christ that it's borrowed from the story of Samson, right? the, the language of it. Um, but anyway, we, we have these parallels, so we know that we have that. Um, now, the darkness here, it's going to be Philistine oppression. But before we even get there, so what we want to do with this is we want to look at Manoah. Um, because this is primarily a story about Manoah, even though it's his wife as well. But we don't know her name. We just know Manoah's name. Now, the number for Manoah, for Manoah is 4495. Um, so it's uh, Hebrew... Four four nine five. <clears throat> um, just going to do analysis of this. <clears throat> Basically, five times twenty nine times thirty one. Um. Now it's a period, if we took it as a period of time, it would be uh, 12 years. And 112 days. So I don't know if that's significant. Um, Uh, the square is twenty twenty five zero two five. So if we just square that number, um, so four four nine five squared is twenty twenty fifty twenty five. So it's got um, iterations of twenty five twenty. That's kind of an odd sort of uh, structure. So 20,205,025. 25. So, it, it, you know, if you took... 
So it's 20, 20, and then 50, 20, so 525. I don't know. I don't know what to make of that particularly. So. But I guess we could put that in. So if we go to the power of two. Oops. Your mic keeps coming on and I can't mute you there. So now you're muted. Okay. There we go. <clears throat> End up muting you when I'm trying to mute myself. <clears throat> so does this tell us anything about Manoa? You know, how do we, if, if we're going to say it's Manoa, we usually place him at the time of the end. Now, this isn't at the end of the 40 years of Philistine oppression. And I can't remember where this is, where Stephen placed it. Um, it's going to be roughly, I believe, roughly about midway of the 40 years of Philistine oppression. So Samson's going to be born. You know, he's going to grow up, but he's not going to be coming and judging Israel at, you know, the beginning of the end of the 40 years. I mean, it's at the end of the 40 years, I guess he'll be judged. Um, so I'm not really sure where to place this chronologically. So I'm going to have to ask Stephen again about that because I know I'm going to get it wrong. Now, um, so the darkness itself is just Philistine oppression. And so that's 13, verse 1. Right, that's going to talk, talk about the darkness. So it's pretty straightforward. And so then we have a time of the end. Now, the time of the end isn't particularly marked. It's not the end of 40 years. It's just going to be this point where Manoa is uh, going to come into play. But the first thing that's going to happen is an angel of the Lord is going to appear to his wife. So the other thing I guess we could say, um, there are two things. Um, maybe, maybe what we would look at is more the business of Manoah's wife. So Manoah's wife is barren. Now, Manoah means rest. Uh, who's his wife? I don't believe we're given a name for his wife. Yeah, I mean, but symbolically. Would his wife then be the movement? Okay. Well, I think this has to go farther back. I mean, um, we know that if if we're looking that, at this, this is a zoom into the period of darkness that precedes 9-11. And this woman is barren, but she's going to give birth to a son at 9-11. Right? So... I mean, I think we would have an end to this story, and that's going to be the third angel arriving. That's going to be the birth of Samson. Is right. That's the way that I would 
look at the end of this, because this is a message leading to the birth of Samson. It is a period of darkness within the line of Samson. But in this case, this period of darkness is a line of light. That is, it's a message that's, that's leading up to 9-11. And, you know, we, we'd have to figure out where this line starts. Because the so woman... then is Manoah's wife... Okay, I didn't catch everything you said. I heard is Manoah's wife. See, I would be inclined to put here um, that this is going to be connected with the time of the end on the bigger line that we have for this movement, like November 9th, 1989. Or do we even go further back? So we know Manoah's wife is a church. Right, because a woman represents a church. <clears throat> I mean, does this represent the Seventh day Adventist church, or at least an aspect of it? Because it is the wife of Manoah, and Manoah means rest. That was the question that I was asking, whether or not this is representing the Seventh-day Adventist Church. Yeah. And I would think in the context here, because it's this period of darkness that we're, we're representing, that we're zooming into, that that's what it would represent. Some aspect of the Adventist Church. Uh, it's barren. It doesn't reflect Christ's character, right? Christ hasn't been born in it. But then when we look at this line, we're going to see, you know, the one that's born, Samson, I mean, is very unchristlike, like But he's still going to accomplish the task that was given to him. Right. So it, it's an ironic story um, in that sense, morally. So we know that his wife is barren. I'm just going to. So his wife is barren. That's the darkness. And so a message is going to come. For his wife. And to me, the place to mark this would be 11989. That's where I would place it. That's the message that arrives. And so, this message that arrives, what message arrives in 1989? In regard to the barren. That's the question. I mean, Jeff says the message that arrives in 1989 is the understanding of the repeat of Millerite history. <clears throat> Can we see that in this story? I would think we can. Okay. Okay, so exactly how would we, what are the symbols that we can do that? It 
if we were to look at this starting from 1833 to 1843, would that be a proper comparison? Okay, so you're, uh, you're going to look at Millerite history. And where would you put 1833 to 1843, the period of darkness? Well, the eight, we've, we've made the application that 1833 is the beginning of the Feast of Trumpets in a symbolic way. And don't the trumpets alert people to the fact that there is a need to understand what the scripture is offering? Okay, so you're gonna you say that's the Feast of Trumpets, thirty-three to forty, forty-three, right? Um, okay, how how do you mark that? I believe if we look at this carefully, we would find that the pioneers marked it that way, <laughs> because the Feast of Trumpets was to be a ten-day preparation for the uh, Day of Atonement. Okay. I've never heard of that before. Um, I know they marked the 10 days uh, from uh, October 13th to October 22. But I believe you'll also find that there's a 10-year period. Yeah, but did they mark that 10-year period? Yes. Okay. Um, yeah, if you can find me that reference, it'd be helpful. All right. Um, when you say the pioneers, are you talking about like prior to... 1844, or are you talking about after? After 1844. Okay. Well, I can't find it in a search here but yeah if you can find that reference i've never heard of that idea right. I, anyway i don't know if we would do that even if it was the case i don't um because here what we're doing is you're just creating a line that's going to be zoomed into the period of darkness that period of darkness precedes 9 11 so in some ways we could be Say we're zooming into 9-11. And, and in that zoom into 9-11, we're going to see this, this thing, the, the, the light that leads to 9-11. That's going to be this movement's history. But it's going to look different than it does when we look at the line from 1989 to the Sunday law, because this is going to be this first part of this line, at least. So we're not sure what it's going to look like, because we haven't constructed it. We know it's about a barren wife. And so the message here has to relate to that symbol. Um, so a couple of things just uh, that we're going to have to do here then. Uh, when we look at um, – where was this here? So Samson, there was something I was looking at. Can't remember where it was. Okay, so he's Manoah is from Zora. Now Zora um, is six eight eight one. Now if you counted six thousand. Um, uh, let me see here. What would I do?
Um, if I counted that number of days, it's going to be July 4th, 2020. If I, count, if I count from November 9th, 1989, it's going to bring me to July 4th, 2020. If I did that correctly. Okay, no, I'm actually counting from 9-11, pardon me. Um, yeah, so if I count, no, that's not correct. I'm wrong here. I have to count, I was at the wrong date. So I have to count 6881 from September 11th, 2001, brings me to July 14th, four days before July 18th. So whether that means anything or not, I don't know. Um, but it, it is a period of uh, 18 years and some days. So it's, it's four days short of the 18th, the place that he's from. Right, which is Zora. Um, okay, so in the year 2020, the 525 begins at July 18th. All I know is there's got to be something there that I don't I don't see yet, but I don't know. That's something to think about. <clears throat> okay, so we, we're we're looking at this line trying to figure this out. So we, we have the symbol of the wife being barren. We're saying that it's going to be November 9th, 1989. But we need some symbol that's going to tie us to this date. So I looked at Zora, and but but there I wasn't counting from November 9th, 1989. I was counting from September 11th. But of course, they are the same way, Mark. So that it brings me within four days of July 18th, whether that's significant or not, I don't know. Because I know it's 6,885 days uh, from September 11th, 2001 to July 18, 2020. <clears throat> um, what else could tie us to Okay, Zora, Wasp, Bumblebee, okay. Connect it maybe in that way. Um, We're moving time slow here, but I'm trying to think. Now, if I can, so let's just continue looking at these. Um, his normal sum of his name is 52. Uh, the normal product is 21840 from 1840. <clears throat> which is approximately 60 years. We took that number. Um, OK, 
Okay, so. Be 910 days if we took that uh, normal product as hours. Nine hundred and ten days divided by three sixty five point two five. So it's about two years and a half. Nine ten give us anything? Okay. Well, could the Philistines represent the communists as a first application? So so I mean I, I don't think so, just because we're not dealing with the United States here. We're dealing with, with Adventism. That would be, I don't know if I could make that application. That's not, we're definitely not moving very fast on this. So it's something we're going to have to look into uh, before we come together tomorrow. I'm going to look at it a bit more. Um, I'm just trying to find symbols that tie us to this. Um, so something that gives us November 9th, 1989, in some way, connecting it to some span of time. Anyway, we're going to have to close with prayer here. So these are things to think about, what we're going to do with this line. But we need to finish up Samson. Now, just to sort of look ahead a little bit. So these studies, we're not going to, we're going to take the week off before camp meeting. So we're not going to have studies um, from the 16th to the 20th. Uh, because me and Stephen are going to be working together. He's getting here on the 13th. Um, we're also not having studies uh, this Sunday and Monday coming up, because I'm going to be gone. And uh, so, so we have roughly about 10 studies left, nine or 10 studies. And we got to get through Samson. And, and tie these loose ends up together and, and hopefully a little bit before that because uh, um, I'm working on the notes. I got to get all these diagrams ready for the notes. So I'm going to take a bit of time cleaning everything up. <clears throat> so that's what we have left to do before the camp meeting. So anyway, let's close with prayer. Dear Father in heaven, we are very thankful for the study this morning. We just ask for your Holy Spirit to continue to be with us and bring us together again and to help us to sort through uh, this line to see if there's any light there. And uh, we pray for each person that you can watch over them. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. <clears throat>